Hello, I'm Karen Coleman. I'm a broadcast journalist based in Ireland and I cover stories that go from global to local. And today, unsurprisingly, we're focusing on the COVID-19 crisis. And as of today, Saturday the 11th of April, the United States has more cases of COVID-19 than any other single country in the world. New York is the epicentre of that pandemic in the US. But what is it like now for medics working in the front lines of the pandemic in New York? Well, I'm joined now from New York by Dr. John Sullivan, who's from Dublin. John is a doctor in training in New York City, and that's why we're going to him today, because he's working in one of the designated COVID-19 hospitals. He's been working on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic for the last few weeks. We wanted to hook up with him to see what it's like working there. He's a final year urology resident at the University Hospital Brooklyn Kings County Medical Center. So, John, thank you very much for joining us. Can you just give us some insights into what it's like working in your hospital right now on the COVID-19 crisis? It is, uh, it's, it's quite surreal, uh, Karen, the, the, uh, the setup uh, over here in New York at the moment, both uh, in the city where, where I live um, uh, and where I'm working out in, in Brooklyn. I live uh, in an apartment in the lower part of uh, Manhattan or in the financial districts in Battery Park City. And uh, as you can imagine, it's it's just a surreal uh, place to be at the moment. You know, a, usually a, a bustling, uh, you know, center of, of activity is a ghost town. Uh, so it, it's, 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 it's just really, really weird to see it. Um, Work-wise, I'm out in, in, in Brooklyn. So that's um, probably about 30 minutes from here in the center of Flatbush. East Flatbush, which is a very you know working class um, section of of the the borough, uh, and uh, there's no doubt that we're experiencing you know a significant um, stress out there in in the medical centres at the moment. And John, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I know now that you have to be careful in terms of revealing any sensitive information, but can you give us a deeper sense of what it's like working in a hospital where you have so many COVID-19 patients? So, you know, Manhattan uh, is, is the, you know, the, the, the main, um, you know, populous, you know, section of the, uh, of the city as such, or at least the um, the area that has the most densely populated, um, you know, uh, sections. But where I am out in Brooklyn, the population of the borough is, you know, approximately two million. Uh, it is a um, uh, not as densely populated, but still an extremely, you know, busy area. And where where I am in uh, in Flatbush, um, we we deal really with the 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 poor people of the city, so um, the uninsured. Um, the um, uh, the two institutions that I'm working in are, are, are safety net hospitals as such. You know, New York is a sanctuary city, um, but uh, Kings County Hospital, where I am at the moment, is a, a considered a safety net hospital. About 800 beds, uh, and directly across the street, uh, Downstate a University Hospital, approximately about 400. So on either side of, of Clarkson Avenue and Flatbush, uh, we have about you know a thousand bed uh, capacity, um, you know, institutions. Uh, that are really, you know, I want to be overly, um, uh, uh, you know, descriptive about it in a negative way, but almost at bursting point, uh, you know, with with uh, with the the capacity and the strain that the hospitals are under. Um, so it's it's something else. Can you describe that a little bit more? Maybe you know, what does all of that look like? I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was probably around you know the the first of March. Or early March, that the cases started to, um, uh, you know, to rear their head here, or at least you know, positive cases were first being um, revealed, and it just snowballed since. It was about three weeks ago now, at, at uh, uh, you know, around you know mid March, that uh, the governor brought in these you know social uh, restrictions, um, and uh, and the people really have been a bit slow to uh, adhere to that. So. Um, it's it's just continued to to escalate the you know the the amount of folks that are coming into the emergency room uh, on on both sides of Clarkson Avenue so much so at this point that um, there is tented areas outside both uh, Kings County and Downstate Hospital uh, that are effectively emergency rooms now uh, so not within the the structure of the hospital 
but overflow um, you know, uh, areas that people are coming in and being triaged before actually getting in the door of the hospital. Wow, that's incredible. And once they do get inside the door of the hospital, what happens then? Uh, the emergency room is a um, is an extremely busy place anyway at baseline, clearly in a, in a hospital like Kings County. You know, it's, it's a level one trauma center. Interestingly, actually, the first level one trauma center in the country. Um, and so there's always, you know, a, a, an extremely, um, uh, you know, uh, large throughput of, of individuals. And, uh, you know, the, the traumas have not stopped. Uh, and, the, you know, the, the usual activity of the emergency department still continues. Uh, and then you just surplant on top of that, uh, you know, all these very sick people coming in uh, with their respiratory difficulties. Um, so it's, um, it's an extremely busy place. Uh, there's a lot of stressed individuals, um, you know, on the front line, the, the emergency medical physicians and, um, and allied healthcare staff that are there. They're really doing, you know, a, um, an immense job uh, at trying to, you know, keep the whole machine moving on. And John, what about the issue of personal protective equipment? You know, of course, that's been a huge issue, big issue in the US, but a big issue here in Europe and in other countries. But even in Ireland here, we've had issues about medical staff being able to be properly protected when they're dealing with COVID-19 patients. Are you getting the proper protection and, and that vital equipment in your hospital? At the start, Karen, there was there was you know there wasn't enough um, equipment, personal protective equipment, and and the you know the the N95 masks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it it has we've caught up. You know, uh, FEMA came on the ground here a few weeks ago, the um, the emergency management agency, uh, and the, the federal uh, you know firepower has come into town now, and so as such, we are getting. Um, everything we need um, in terms of protection. But there's no doubt that last week and the week before, um, we were we were going into the front line, maybe at, at times with, with less than ideal uh, protection. And were you doing that yourself? Were you out attending to COVID-19 patients on the wards? Y yeah, um, and, and, and we still are. It's a it's a little bit strange speaking uh, as a, you know, a urology trainee, a surgical trainee, who for the most part is either in a clinic, uh, seeing patients uh, or performing elective surgeries uh, to find yourself, you know, in an intensive care unit or um, in an emergency room, uh, trying to, um, you know, do the best you can uh, to help. Um, the reality is that, you know, the skill set that I've developed and, and my colleagues have is, is not um, you know, uh, one that um, makes us maximally useful in this scenario. But uh, you know, we're we're trying our best to do what we can. Um, but does, yeah, we're 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 on the front lines there, trying to trying to help out. And what about your own health concerns? Have you been worried about your own health and possibly catching the COVID nineteen virus? Yeah, I mean, you you, you would only naturally be be that uh, way. Um, you know, we we get together as a, a group every week and as residents and colleagues and friends, and we talk about it and, and our own little, you know, concerns and stresses. But I think that the group, you know, together have, um, have you know, decided, uh, rightly so, that, you know, that if, if we as, you know, reasonably fit and healthy uh, young physicians uh, can't tackle this one, then, you know, who is going to do that? So, um you know, it's either it's either get involved or or well, there's no no real way not to. You just got to face it and get in there. And did you make those kinds of decisions? Did you and your colleagues get together and work out maybe potentially who would be suitable for doing this kind of frontline work and who wouldn't be? Indeed, I mean the 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 older members of the department, uh, the attending surgeons, the consultants. Uh, you know, in their 60s, uh, a little bit, uh, you know, older with, with comorbid issues, um, you know, have rightly so taken more of a, um, a remote stance and remote, you know, position. And they're doing most of the stuff via telemedicine. Uh, Co-residents of mine um, and certain individuals that have other, you know, health, baseline health issues. Um, I have a friend of mine and colleague who is down a spleen. Uh, he 
he's a urology resident. He, he was in an accident, skiing accident a couple of years ago and uh, he had to get his spleen taken out. And and so he is, of course, at higher risk than the rest of us. So he is, uh, you know, uh, he's taken a back, a back line. Uh, the rest of us, thankfully, that are, um, you know, uh, healthy and well um, uh, are, are, are stepping up. And you mentioned hospitals in your area, one specifically that you're working in, that are in the poorer parts of New York City, that are working in, maybe that are operating at least in more working class areas. I'm sure you've seen those images that emerged over the last day or so, grisly pictures of coffins being buried in mass graves on New Heart Island in New York City. It must have been horrific for Americans to see this sort of stuff happening in their own country. Are you seeing things like that in your neighborhood? Yeah, it, it, it is uh, in a, a city and a country which is, um, uh, you know, uh, what the United States stands for um, and, and a leader, you know, a world leader in, in health and in um, uh, all this sort of stuff. It's just, it's, it's incredible to see that the, the, the scenes that are going on, you know, the kind of third world-esque um you know, uh, scenes that are um, uh, evident here. Um, you know, there, there is, uh, they, they've, they've had to pull trucks in um, to the back of Kings County and to the back of um, Down State Hospital to, you know, to take these bodies away. And um, and these folks are, um, these folks' families are um, oft times, I, I would assume, although I'm not, I don't know the exact ins and outs of it, but they're not seeing their, their loved ones. You know, the, um, these bodies are just being, as you say, taken off to um, areas and, and, and buried. So it's, um, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, it's clearly, it's not just, this is a, a global issue and everyone is equally like yourselves are affected at home, but there's no doubt that this place is a hotbed of it at the moment. And in your hospital, are you seeing patients who've had COVID-19 dying as a result of that? Yeah. Um, we, they have these, you know, overhead paging systems here in, in U.S. hospitals where there's, you know, codes. A code 60, 66 is a respiratory arrest. Uh, you know, a code 88 is a, a more of a cardiovascular collapse. And, and a code 99 is is is, um, is an imminent, you know, um, death as such. And, and these, um, these codes are, you know, they're going off every, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, so it's 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 happening. The the intensive care units uh, are um, are full, um, and the uh, indeed the the um, the operating rooms now and the recovery rooms, indeed the preoperative area in in Kings County has turned into an intensive care unit. So, um, you know, it's it's sprawling through the hospital. And what about? your own ability to be able to sustain yourself during these very tough and harrowing days, John. Are you getting enough rest? Because I'm sure that your schedule as a trainee doctor is, is tough as it is. Um, are you working long hours? Or are they giving you plenty of rest in the meantime? It is, but, um, you know, uh, the, the first few weeks when this, um, this became very real here, um, we, as you know, a, a surgical subspecialty, were were sort of on the, um, you know, on the back line uh, defence as such, and and things quietened down. Uh, we, you know, our elective surgeries were cancelled, uh, our clinics were cut, uh, and things were were quieter. Um, it, it has now changed because the system is under such stress that the, uh, you know, whatever type of subspecialty that you're involved in, you're really getting brought into the front lines. But in truth, they're looking after us. You know, we, we go in, we do a 24 hour shift and then we come back and um, we have a day off to recover. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not it's honestly not overwhelming at the moment. And what about looking at what's going on here back home, John? I, I'm sure it's not easy being a doc in New York and not able to be back home to maybe work in the hospitals here. What's your own perception of how this crisis is being dealt with back in Ireland um, compared to the way it is in New York? I, I must say I'm a, a very proud Irish man and I, I'm uh, looking forward to getting home in the not too distant, but extremely proud of, as the way, you know, the way we've, we've tackled this at home. And I think that um, the Americans here 
um, could could learn a lot from the uh, you know the way we've approached this um, on all levels, from you know the the uh, administration and the government and um, uh, to the HSE to you know to the regular you know folks on the street that are really adhering to you know uh, there's no doubt I'm I'm on to my my folks uh, my mum and dad every day and and friends and colleagues really on a daily basis and um, it's great to see how we've you know we, we've we've confronted this at home.